Peace to everybody. Uh, this is a follow update about J.K. Rowling's latest Dumbledore comment. Feels like a cop out. And as I posted a video earlier this week about um, J.K. Rowling getting backlash about over Dumbledore slash Grindelwald being gay and that, and it's just not exactly what people want to hear. There's nothing like watching a legacy crumble in real time. And these days, one feels spoiled for choice. This week, it is J.K. Rowling's updates to the Harry Potter series, which has set the world, or at least, swaths of the internet on fire. So this week, is all about J.K. Rowling. Um, she's doing updates or somebody's doing updates on her and of course you know you can't believe everything what you hear on the internet don't believe everything what you read and this time now the legacy is crumbling because of all these accusations now in an interview of to accompany the blu-ray edition of fantastic beach the crimes of grindelwald Rowling elaborated on an earlier explanation of Dumbledore's relationship with the Dark Wizard. She said their relationship was incredibly intense, it was passionate, and it was a love relationship. So J.K. Rowling has came out and said that it was uh, um, a relationship was incredibly intense, it was passionate. And, of course, I never saw the um, Fantastic Beasts, the Crimes of Grindelwald, so... But as long as J.K. Rowling elaborated on an earlier explanation, then she's happy of what, what is becoming of the relationship. And as you can see here, Holly Thomas, I don't know who, who she, I don't know who she plays, so... This has invited some backlash, including an important gay romance between the two wizards as an afterthought, and critically one expressed in a spin-off film DVD extras, rather than in the film itself. Feels like a cop-out. How wonderful it would have been for millions of children to have known that Dumbledore was gay from the beginning of the series, and to have grown up with that knowledge woven into the books. But the e evolution of Harry Potter has now spanned decades and as much is complicated by many layers of conflicting contests. Well, first of all, the kids don't need to know about Dumbledore being gay because that, they're way too young and... They don't know what uh, homosexuality is. You gotta wait till they get older to explain it to them. And of course, it was one part of the DVD extras, I guess, that she just happened to stick in there. And, she, and, it, and now it feels like a cop out because of all the gay romance between the wizards. <laughs> When Rowling sat down to map out her fantasy universe between 1990 and 1995, she could never have imagined the influence it would have or the responsibility that would entail. On the face of it, she appeared to do what most authors do, which was illustrate the social issues most personal to her. Rowling was famously broke when she wrote the series in the theme of class and social surrogation on that bias, muggles versus purebloods, abused house elves, etc. is prominent throughout the books. So it, she never could have made all right, so J.K. Rowling could have never imagined it, and uh, but it was something she illustrated on the social issues and it was mapped down in her fantasy between 1990 and 95 so it took a it took a lot of years like to have this mapped out real carefully 
And of course, you got the Muggles versus the Purebloods, and of course, abuse house elves and etc. on that. But she is doing the best she can right now. And I know people are saying, "Oh, she's re she shouldn't have said anything." Well. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with it because the kids don't need to know when they're real little. Of course, as time went on, heterosexual romances were featured in the written series. And the idea that in a school filled with hundreds of teenagers, let alone the wilder world they later explore, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger may or might not meet an openly LGBTQ person at any point is laughable. However, it's easy to forget how much the landscape has changed over the last couple of decades. And yes, the landscape has changed over the last couple of decades. Because now, now we got Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger. They didn't even think about the LGBTQ community. They just, to them, it was laughable. And, of course, they all, all three of them were best friends in the movie. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was published in 1997, six years before Section 28. A law banning consoles, or I should say conceals or whatever, and schools in England and Wales from intentionally promoting het heterosexuality was repeated in 2003. It would have been very difficult to get an explicit gay romance into a book aimed largely at elementary school age children at the time. By the time... The later books came out, the massive span of its distribution, they are sold in 200 countries, could also have made this tricky. So, yeah, the movie was called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but it was, they decided, well, we're going to rename it. So they called it Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which it's, it made more sense, but the Section 28, a law banning conceals in schools and that about promoting heterosexuality, that was totally forbidden in the schools over there. So they, because the children just can't handle what is, what cannot be around an, an explicit gay romance because it, they're, like I said, they're too little. These aren't necessarily good excuses. Philip Pullman introduced a moving relationship between two male angels in the subtitle, subtitle, sorry, knife, the second of his Dark Materials trilogy, which was also published in the UK in 1997. That book was admittedly aimed at a slightly older age group, but nevertheless, it was managed. So that book was published in 1997, and it was immediately aimed to older children that will understand what is going on. And, of course, there was no excuses. Philip Pullman had introduced, introduced it to the in, older children, like teenage years. For whatever reason, the opportunity to feature more diversity in Harry Potter, one missed in print might have been taken on screen. The failure on that score has become less excusable over time, but it is not all J.K. Rowling's fault. So yeah, you can't blame J.K. Rowling for every little detail because it is is less excusable. So you can't blame her. And it's um feature more diversity in Harry Potter than what you think it had. Rowling first said publicly that Dumbledore was gay in 2007 during a Q&A with students at Carnage Hall. She relayed the story of a script reading for the sixth Potter film during which she had 
to slip the director a note to explain why a line about the wizard longing after a girl in his youth had to be cut. She explains that Dumbledore falling for Grindelwald added to his horror when the dark wizard turned to evil. So Dumbledore had um mentor another um wizard, but he turned dark. They cut out the part of why Dumbledore was not allowed to talk about his um back then girlfriend, I guess. But longing after a girl in his years, they had to, they decided to cut it out. And you know, I I really think that was kind kind of wrong of what they did to cut out that part. I mean, you're supposed to know every detail of the movie and every detail of the book, which I never read the Harry Potter books. I only watched the movies. That was it. And of course, here in the video is J.K. Rowling herself, but I'm not going to play that video. For Rowling, the significance of this narrative doesn't appear to lie on Dumbledore's sexuality, but in the amplification of a great betrayal. You get the sense that with these explanations, she simply feels she is filling in the blanks. So J.K. Rowling, she's definitely filling in the blanks. And um, she's um, she has that sense to do so. And the significance of this narrative does appear to lie in Dumbledore's sexuality. But people are just taking things the wrong way and um they're like oh well we we don't want to hear about it but and then i kind of agree with the people they don't want to hear about it just keep it a secret don't let the whole world know about it but since jk rowling is getting a backlash from this the broader context into which these new remarks have been released has it done Rowling any favors though her sincerity about her characters is evident her latest comments on Dumbledore come alongside a distasteful trendy commodification of LGBTQ culture is in recent years this makes any apparently superficial affiliation look optimistic especially when it is not backed up by any visible evidence. So there was no evidence whatsoever, and no matter how much you tried to get evidence, there is none. And, um, of course, the LGBTQ community, um, I, people are feeling uncomfortable about it because they are, ta they, they, um, kind of going with the way things are going in the wrong direction for everything. Rowling also has a track record of making rather tone-deaf proclamations. The reveal that I cannot therapy the power of a human is to transform it to an animal-like state was a Metaphor for HIV was especially memorial, more, I'm sorry, memorable, yeah, I'm right, and I'll consider considering that werewolves could become dangerous and out of control. She also has a tendency to blur the line between fiction and reality and use the wizarding world as a tool with which to make sense of the real one in a 2015 Twit longer. She explained that what Harry's views on Israel might be. So she's kind of pretty much blurring out between the lines of what she wants to blur out and then put what she wants in there. Even though it was a metaphor for HIV and it was ill considerate that werewolves could become dangerous and out of control. So if you're doing tests on animals and, um, you feel as though something is not right. Of course, they're going to keep retesting until something is definitely going to figure out what it is. And, of course, there's the tone-deaf proclaimers that they just tune everything out. 
as off key as this comes across in public, this way of thinking is perfectly normal for a fantasy writer. But the sheer scale of Rowling's platform and reach and unpredicted the high personal nature of Harry Potter to so many people places huge pressure on her in, to maintain an exceptional, universally inspiring standards as a figurehead. She is very visible, very successful, and very wealthy. This makes her something of a flashpoint when things go wrong. So yeah, she's very wealthy because writing all these books, uh, Harry Potter books, and of course, I don't know if there is Fantastic Beast book out or not. So I, I really can't tell for sure. Because I know, like I said, I never read any of Harry Potter's books and the, the Fantastic Beast. I never saw the movie. I don't know if the book is out or whatever, but she is a fantasy writer. That's all she is. It's just fantasy. And that's how it came to be. Crimes of Grindelwald had many plot and rep representation problems besides Dumbledore's unspoken sexuality. The casting of Korean actress Claudia Kim as Najini, a snake ser servant to an evil Nazi Esquire villain, and the misattribution of Najini's name to in the ocean, mythology was a major one. It looked especially careless given the criticism the series had historically received of being overtly white and Johnny Depp taking on the role of Grindelwald in the wake of huge negative publicity was also controversial and that doesn't even begin to address the plot and tone of the film which were generally agreed to be all over the place. So it was pretty much all over the place. And they brought it a Korean actress, Claudia Kim. She played Najini. And of course, you got Jenny Depp. He was taking on the role of Grindelwald. So he kind of played the gay guy type, even though he's not gay in real life. You know, it's just the plot is here and there. And of course, you know, it's a mythology thing, and of course, fantasy writers can write anything they want as long as it's not really harming anybody. It's just fantasy, and as you get like suspense also in the middle of everything. It's frustrating that for all the talk off screen about the significance of Dumbledore's love for another man, that love remains as deniable. On screen in 2019, as it was when first revealed in 2007, it feels like a huge missed opportunity considering that love has such direct relevance to the story, but there is also a sense of compound pressure on Rowling. So J.K. Rowling, she's still getting pressured. She still don't want to don't want to listen to the people which I don't blame her but it is deniable for the um for the Dumbledore's love interest for another man so and you know it, it's just frustrating as she want as JK Rowling has it because she doesn't want to be bombarded with all these things that are coming at her Harry Potter was formative in the childhood of many of today's adults and continues to engage new readers in a world which is, at least in part, vastly more socially aware than it was in 1997, preserving the past experience for, I mean, of the former while enriching and evolving the Potter universe for the later or latter was never going to be easy. The books can't be rewritten, but the best hope for the wizarding world might be a vast improvement in the quality of any new movies. It's still better 
one might be for any current or future children's authors to to include clear LGBTQ narratives as par for the course and for those stories to become as beloved and as influential as Harry Potter. So yeah, these so now the books can't be rewritten by J.K. Rowling because once she puts what she puts out, that's where she has it. And for the future children's authors, yeah, hopefully they can um stick in that part. It all depends on how they're going to do it. But for the stories to become as beloved and as, yeah, the Harry Potter movies are loved and so are the books and of course the reader readers are enjoying it i mean you can't really do anything about it too much for the past experience but it is what it is and um jk rowling is wealthy so she doesn't have to worry about anybody what what they say really she's just doing what she wants to do and that's write books Anyhow, um, tell me what you think about this story in the comments below. I am out.